Here's the second way that you're losing by not having a vision board. You rob yourself of the opportunity to do a strategic life assessment and create for yourself a strategic life plan. Where may I talk about? Well, at the end of every year, I sit down for at least an hour and do a life review. I'm a mean full on life review. Me look at everything from the bank account to the friendships to the intimate relationships to my body and how I feel to my mental and emotional health. Everything, career goals and professional actions that I took and the payoffs or the not payoffs. Everything I look at, I ask myself, how did I spend this year? And it's important that I do that because and this is reason number one and after this reason you really need no more but reason number one is I am the CEO of my life and what that means is I am a managing director I have to create a life plan I have to create the three-year strategic goal I have to do the, the, the performance reviews at particular times to make sure that things are running well in the business called Crystal's life but as a CEO that are one work I also have the job of being my HR coordinator I am a human resource manager. I have to decide which human beings I want to hire in my life and which human beings I shall fire from my life. How do I make the assessment of the contributions that they are making in my own space and the contribution that I am making in their own space? Am I enhancing those relationships? Am I engaging with them meaningfully? Are they enhancing themselves in order to add value to my life? Or them just a kind of bounce about and I hope that things work out? Are those the kinds of human beings that I want in my space, in my life? And if the answer is yes, how do I deepen those relationships? Relationships. If the answer is no, how do I cut it off? Those are important questions that you only get to answer if you're doing a life assessment. And so before I even do my vision board, I make sure that I've assessed myself in the year that has passed and the relationships that matter to me in the year that has passed. And that helps me to answer questions like, what should I focus on? What should my goals be in relation to my career, in relation to my personal finance, in relation to my body, my mind, my spirit, my soul, in relation to my human interpersonal and intimate connections? But apart from being my CEO and my HR manager, I am also my, my financial controller. So me, I properly sit down and look at my budget and one time, check my spending, check my checking account, check my savings account, all the um, bills I have to pay, any outstanding debts, any um, contributions and donations I want to make, any commitments I've made to charity. I have to look on the whole thing for the whole year because nobody's going to do it for me. And if I move lazy upon myself as my chief financial um, controller, then mega flap, right? Mega broke for life. And the other, the other element of it, and this one now is about taking full-on responsibility for your life now. Radical accountability and honesty. You are your own cleanup crew. You're your chief maintenance department. So everything will go wrong in your life by doing a year-end assessment and seeing where your spills are, where your messes are, which part of the house never paint good and want to repaint, which part termite, termite that eat out the furniture. Like pro properly looking at where the house is falling down. As your maintenance crew, your cleanup crew, your ancillary staff, you have to look for them something and decide, oh, you have to clean it up. And that means, apart from the relationships that you probably need to end and start, but the things that more you within yourself need to work on and you move lazy with. So are you being honest with the things that you're expecting from people? And that failure to be honest is that causing them to come in and mash up a little house and the structure where you are trying to build so that you have to go back and clean it up after them. Through heartbreak, through unforgiveness, through dishonesty and disappointment, where am I creating my own messes by not being clear with other people and by not being clear with myself? So because I understand how important all of that is and I'm always prepared to take full responsibility for my life. If something now work, my now look for see if it's a generational curse we are passed on. Yeah, that is probably true, but nobody now buying up my hand and force me in any direction. I am making my choices. And so recognizing that I sit down with a lot of deliberation and a lot of intent to do my year end review. And it's the reason I've created a mini course on it that walks you through my life assessment guide and allows you to do a couple of things. One, ask yourself some core questions like where did I experience the most pain last year? In what quadrant, in what area of my life? And what was the cause of that pain? What am I going to do to heal if I have not healed and to prevent myself from walking down a particular path again? Um, where did I experience the most, most growth and joy? Because sometimes you had the good in a particular area, but because you're not assessing it, you don't recognize how you have grown leaps and bounds and you keep thinking thinking that that is an area I need to work on and I'm not good enough in that area yet when you're really growing 
exponentially in some cases and perhaps that doesn't need to be your number one goal on your vision board but there's also a greater detailed aspect of the life assessment where I break my life down into quadrants and for, for this year I'm working on particular quadrants personal finance um, intimate relationships personal relationships um, under one my physical mental and emotional well-being and my profession and career goals and I've created those 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 squares in my quadrant and then I do a SWOT analysis what are the strengths in these areas right now what are the weaknesses in these areas right now what are the opportunities that I'm seeing that I could really maximize on and get some quick wins or some long-term wins if I develop the right habits and what are the threats where am I seeing like one storm out for blow down the thing and make the proper uh, plan and decisions to avoid the house and get blow down. So, because that life assessment gets done at the end of every year, and you can do your year any at any point, any month, it can be January, it can be June, it can be July, it can be October. But once you do that year end assessment and decide, say, all right, these are the areas we need to work on and fix up, then you take these answers and you create the vision board. Some people get to the vision board with the picture, the car, the house, the wedding dress, the ring, um, wish away you want, vacation, the promotion, where you want to get. Hello, it not gonna happen if you're not properly assess your life and see if them areas they need to work on. Is Kara your problem? No, Kara's not your problem. Personal financial management is your problem. So I when you get the car, you probably can't make the car payments, can't put gas in the car, can't insure the car, things are gonna work out well if you don't master the personal finances. So before you set that the goal there, maybe your goal this year should be mastering my savings habits. So I put aside 10% every month um, in investment or in my savings account. So that when you do get whatever the asset is that you're trying to amass, you are the kind of person who can properly manage the asset. Because a lot of times we run into the asset and we don't know how we're going to maintain and keep it. Um, for the long term you understand what I mean so I need you to sit sit down be prepared to be radically honest with yourself to assess the kind of life that you have been living where you're seeing your wins and where you're seeing your most painful losses and begin to plug those gaps first before we start moving to the material space it don't mean that people don't want to live in a nice big house but if your challenge is personal finance don't go take on the loan from the bank and then they have to come take back the property. You understand what I say? We need to set goals strategically and that only happens when you're doing a very clear, honest and detailed, granular assessment of your life as often as you can. So either you make it a weekly habit to do a review, a monthly habit, um, a, a half year habit or a full year end review. However you do it, it has to do or you can do a meaningful vision board. So, if you're not doing a vision board, you're losing out on the opportunity to do this kind of life life and year in assessment. Now, you might be doing the vision board too, you know, and still not get a benefit here. And so that's why it's important to be very careful of what you want to manifest in your life because you're going to ask for the kind of things that you don't really need. And only when you sit down with yourself in those quiet moments, those honest moments, will you reveal to you what you really need to be happy.